This is VM Vlog, episode three. I'm fresh off the PUP and I'm going to London. We left on Thursday. We left at like 7.30 Thursday night. We landed early morning, uh, Friday in London. Had four hours of sleep. Woke up in London, checked into the hotel. Right when we checked in, we probably had a three hour break. Um, and then we went to practice to try to keep our sleep schedule straight. I was staying at a hotel that had a, a very nice golf course. Yo, I went and bought some ball markers, a shirt, and a yardage book. That shit was 300 pounds, 314 pounds. And it had a football pitch, as they would say. Um, so it was nice to just walk over to practice. It's an international game, so it's a lot of media there. From all over London, all over America, and a lot of comparisons from their football to our football. They have really good fans, we have really good fans, so media day was crazy and I really enjoyed it. Who's the Messi? Josh Allen. Josh Allen, Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, you know, those, those two guys. We can say Messi is uh, Patrick Mahomes and we say Ronaldo is Josh Allen. I like that. I like them both. I, I see what y'all trying to do. I see, I, I see what y'all trying to do. I like them both. I like them both. <laughs> I appreciate you guys. Thank you guys for having me. I like it. Just kill these jerseys. Oh, they sell this at Heroes? <laughs> no. no. Maybe one day. Custom. <laughs> oh, this is our custom stuff? Yeah, we have them at A-Break jerseys. We got the Jordans. Of your Jordan. Hey, it's Trey and Sam Morgan here with the Edit and NFL UK. Now we are here with the man, the myth, the legend, the star icon. What more can I do to butter him up? Vaughn Miller, welcome to London again. So this way we had some kids describe some of your teammates. Okay. Um, and we'd like you to try and guess who you think they were talking about. Okay. Um, they were quite harsh about some of your teammates, but it makes it better, you know? So all we're going to do now is get you to listen back to the kids, how they describe your teammates. Okay. And guess if you can guess them. So there's got to be me or Josh. So is that me? There's Josh. There's Josh. There's Josh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they think you're handsome as well, then, man. Don't worry. Don't worry. I'm Von Miller. Shout out to the French fans. I love you guys. Wee oui, wee. Oui. That's how you say it, right? Wee oui, wee. Oui. That's perfect. Thank you very much, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I call him, Keanu, all the time. Vince, you like that stuff, you good? Vince, yeah, he had to get a, a close up of this. Had to. <laughs> Too deep booted, boy. <laughs> Don't cut it, don't cut it, don't cut it. I've been saying for years that my best friend, B-Mac, I've been saying that he looks like Keanu Reeves and... I'm gonna call him right now, hold on, let me see if he pick up. I'm gonna call him right now. I ran into a guy that had me at the Super Bowl 56 after the game, and I told him I was going to go pick up Keanu Reeves, and he actually thought that I picked up Keanu Reeves, so I ran into this guy. I was with Vaughn when they won the Super Bowl in LA. He's the man. And he said, hey, we got to wait for Keanu Reeves. And for two years, I thought it was actually Keanu Reeves. <laughs> <laughs> it was Brandon <laughs> and it was, uh, it was super cool. Hey, yo, so I was just, God just walked up to me. He's like, hey, man, I drove you in the Super Bowl. He was like, was that Keanu Reeves that you, that you picked up after the, the Super Bowl in L.A.? I was like, no, nah, man, that's my man Brandon McManus, man. He's like, bro, for, for years, I thought that was Keanu Reeves. <laughs> I was like, no, no, no. I was like, no, nah, that's Brandon McManus. That shit, that shit was funny, man. So John Wick, man, they on to you. <laughs> yeah, this is my, this is probably my, I don't know, eighth time in London. So I've, uh, I'm pretty familiar with London and the food and everything that would seem to be new to everybody else. I was pretty familiar with everything in London. It was just like a, a normal away game. It was just extended one day. So instead of it, uh, 
Instead of you going out Saturday before the game and playing on Sunday, we just got there on Friday. So it was a really, really short schedule, um, which I, I thought was fine. Um, I was able to catch up on my sleep and do everything that I needed to do. My teammates might not have said the same, but I felt fine and ready to go for the end. Playing in London is, is totally different. It is a totally different place than playing in the United States. Going from New York or Miami is totally different. We gotta leave two days early, which some might say we should leave three days or a whole week early, but we left two days early. It don't matter to me though. I, I can go play football in Madagascar, but. Game day was incredible. It felt like a normal game day, but it took us an hour and 30 minutes to get there. We, we didn't have a police score or anything else, so we stopped at every red light, um, stopped at every stop sign. It, it felt kind of foreign, um, I would say. Um, but we were, we were foreign, so it was a whole lot different. It took a whole lot longer. We were able to get to the game, and Tottenham Stadium is, is incredible. It's state of the art, and they're building the Buffalo Bills Stadium um, to resemble that. So they have uh, similarities uh, from Tottenham and our stadium. So um, I was very, very uh, interested and I, I really enjoyed the stadium for sure. The stadium was uh, probably in the middle of the city, um, but Bills Mafia traveled like they always do and it was definitely a home game over in London. It was just like riding a bike, but I had to, I couldn't just go super fast on this bike now. I had to you know, kind of dip my toe in the water before, I'm, before I could go swim with the, with, the, with the big kids down in the deep end. So it was uh, a new experience for me, but it was just like riding a bike. Just had to ease my way into it. And you know, I felt like it was a good starting point for me for sure. I mean, the game was a, a crazy game. It felt weird from the get-go. Um, you know, those are the games that you want to get out your system before like the playoffs come. It just felt weird from the get-go and they went for two uh, to start the game and they were up by eight, which is like a, a weird score to overcome. Then when you score, you have to go for two and we didn't get it. So it was just a lot of weird stuff going on and we ended up losing that game to Jacksonville. They have a really, a really good team and we'll probably see those guys uh, in the future for sure. I looked up at halftime and they, I saw a sign from uh, some fans and it said we traveled all the way from France to get a picture with Vaughn. So I, I had to, you know, I had to go over there in the blocks. I had to go over there and, you know, show love to my international fans, of course. Yeah. Shout out to the French fans. I love you guys. Wee oui, wee. Oui. That's how you say it, right? Wee oui, wee. Oui. The turf was terrible. They actually had grass out there at first and then they put turf over the top, which I thought was ridiculous. If you guys are fans of me, y'all know my stance against turf. It is, uh, it is unbelievable that they have high-class athletes, $40 million, $50 million athletes playing on plastic, rubber, and cushion over, over concrete. If you look at it this way, how do I say this? Well, peep this, peep this. I can put my shoe on and I can go on grass and I can like, kick the grass, right? It'll give a little bit, probably leave a couple of divots, and it, it might hurt a little bit, but it won't hurt as bad as stepping on a, a parking lot or a concrete surface and kicking that. Like that just, that just has no give. And that's what athletes feel whenever you're starting and stopping on this surface. Like it just has no give. Like when you stop, you feel it all the way up through your bones. Just imagine like a guy like me playing 13 years on this stuff, like I'm through with it. Like uh, after you get done playing on turf, like that soreness lasts for days. When grass, just maybe like a day or two. It's just it's just better on the body. And that was probably the one thing that the one thing that I do miss from being in the AFC West. Every field was grass, but San Diego was grass, Oakland, which is now the LA Raiders, but they're still grass. The Chiefs were grass and the Denver Broncos were grass. So I played the majority of my games throughout the whole entire season on grass. So it is what it is. At this point, it's just getting ridiculous, man. I feel like it just has to be a major change. And hopefully it'll be this off season where they just say, hey, 
let's get down with the grab. Imagine this, right? Trey White, Torres Achilles, $22 million a year cornerback. Torres Achilles, right? On artificial turf. If you do like the numbers, right? $22 million a year, it's not gonna cost that much to, to change the field. And I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I'm just saying like, I'm just using that for example. Like you can use Aaron Rodgers, any of these examples on, you know, guys getting injured on turf, it's not going. It's not going to cost twenty-two million dollars to put grass into the stadium. State of the art grass is not going to cost that much. You can have heated grass, so even though it snows, you can still have heated grass. Still want to get hard. Like it's it's all type of things that you could do. And then on top of that, like hey, you want to get a concert? Then you just do what Tottenham did and put a platform over the grass and have a concert and then just pull it up. But I'm tired of football stadiums having to to cater to concerts. Monster truck rallies, car shows, whatever they whatever they might want to have on these surfaces, man. It's uh it's getting ridiculous for sure. The game is uh definitely definitely wasn't the outcome that I wanted. But I'm focused on process over outcome. And I did everything in my power to have a, a good, successful week. So I really don't let uh losses bring me down and I don't really let wins get me too high. Like, this is what I love to do. Um, we have a great team, and you just have to bounce back and keep going no matter the outcome. Really the most important thing for me is being able to see my family after the game. Um, whether it's my mom and my dad or my sons there, like being able to catch up with family because this is my life. And to have uh, my family come all the way across the front to support me, man, is, is very, very special to me, man. And I really appreciate my mom and my dad and all my other family members that showed up. Vince, Chelsea, DJ, Uncle James, uh, one, he came over there, even was able to catch up with VMAC after the game as well. So that's what it's all about. This is VM Vlogs. I appreciate you guys. See you guys on the next one. Uh, you been working on bye bye? You want to say bye bye to the vlog? Bye bye. Hey. Bye bye, guys. This is VM Vlogs. Bye bye. <laughs> I appreciate you guys. Say bye, Val. Bye. All right, guys. Bye bye. Uh, Vic said bye too. Bye-bye. 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 Hey, bye-bye. Bye-bye, guys. Hey, bye-bye. Say it to the camera. Bye-bye. Say bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. <laughs>